Turning us now is Oluwale Osase Uzi, a former director of voter education and publicity of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Mr. Osase Uzi, thank you very much for joining us. Two quick things. What is all this furore about? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Well, but I'm not hearing you here in the studio, but if you can hear me, it's fine. I hope you'll be able to get across to our viewers. Quickly, this forore about Beavers and IREV, considering the fact that INEC specifically said that this will be an election that will be driven by IN technology, quoting Beavers, giving assurances about real time, online, uh, transparency, and all of that. What went wrong? The only thing INEC is telling us is technical glitches on February 25. Were those glitches not foreseeable? And then how do we guarantee now that the court has ruled that parties should have access, candidates should have access to the back end and get certified true copies of data? Who can give any assurance about accountability on the part of INEC? I think you asked about at least three questions in one. And um, if I remember all of them, I, you answered the first question. But why did INEC uh, disappoint in view of all they had promised? Um, I think the issue is best answered by the commission itself, which it has done by when it said that they had technical glitches. The nature of the technical glitches and the details of which have not been uh, made uh, public. So I cannot. Um, Speculate. I have to go by what everybody else uh, read in the statement issued by the commission. I believe that it's part of the uh, attempt to overcome some of those glitches. That is why uh, the, the, the postponement. Issue of trust is there. I think your former guest professor answered that very well. There's a trust deficit which um, INEC has to overcome. How? Well, it can do that. How soon it can do that, I really don't know. But um, subsequent to the uh, elections, the governorship and state houses of assembly elections, uh, perhaps that'll be an opportunity for the commission to start rebuilding trust. Because I am of the view that it had a high degree of trust after the Oshun governorship election. People depended on its word. People believed that the Beavers will work, that the IREV will, uh, be, be, will work. So having said that, there is a lot of work to be done in terms of rebuilding. Uh, the, the body charged with conduct of our elections is INEC. No other, per, no other body, no other person can conduct those elections. So there must be trust in that institution. And uh, since we have no choice, we have to just wait and see and, and um, hope that it regains the trust of uh, the majority of citizens. Well, still on trust, Mr. Osaze Uzi, is this issue around the tampering with the information on beavers uh, when INEC reconfigures. And this was one of the main issues that come up when they'd um, approach the courts to allow them vary the order, initial order given to given by the courts to enable them reconfigure beavers. I'd like you to speak on this. Is it possible for INEC to reconfigure without tampering with information? Yes, we've heard that they would uh, you know, back up information on there, but there's still a bit of uncertainty around that. And like you said, it's also around an issue of trust. Well, please, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. Well, I am not a technical expert, but uh, yes, um, from my limited experience, I know that the uh, information contained, the data contained in the Beavers can be saved, can be backed up both in cloud and servers. It certainly can. You don't necessarily have to tamper it to reconfigure it. People have to understand what reconfiguration uh, means or what it consists of. I know, for example, that um, these machines were configured to start at about uh, 8.30 on a certain day, the last election day, 28th of, of, uh, of February. Now, to use it for another election, you have to configure it for the specific date of the election. And you cannot start before that particular time. Elections uh, polls open at 8.30. So if you configure it to start at 7.30, it probably will not start, because it, unless you configure it to start at that time. I think it's a question of trust as well. 
figures should not be accreditation figures or no figures should be put into the beavers until the time limited for opening up polls. And automatically, as you program it, it shuts down at a particular time, by which time it's expected that everybody who was in the queue at 2.30 will have voted. So it doesn't shut down at 2.30, but a period of grace, maybe four, five, six hours, so that it can enable the device to take care of everybody. Well, automatically, it will shut down. Thereafter, you cannot um, uh, accredit anybody unless and until you reconfigure it again. So that's basically the importance of that. But yes, you can um, save all the data and information. The interesting thing is that uh, Dr. Onyechi Ikpeazu was in the um, Oshun governorship election petition as well. So his own experience there, I'm sure, informed, uh, who is now counsel to the Labour Party, informed his um, caution when he did say explicitly that, look, he has had some experience, and that is true, because in Oshun, some of the data had not been synchronized between the beavers and the back end and the servers. So that was why he said there was, a, there was a, 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 some difference between the certified true copy given to the APC in the Oshun elect, election petition and that given to the PDP by that uh, same by the same INEC. So one has to be extremely careful, and I'm happy, and it's usual, for the courts to allow all interested parties, not just the petitioner, but also the respondents, any party to the petition, to have access so that they can watch the process, can monitor the process, and they get all the information and data that they require without tampering and while preserving the integrity of uh, that data and the availability of this device to be used for subsequent elections. All right. Real quickly, so I'd like to ask a couple of things. <clears throat> we have a little background in tech. I, I can speak for myself. This will be done remotely. Yes. It's not that you go and take all the 176,000 beavers and be touching them one by one for recovery. No. There's a back end at which it will be done. So if INEC has their own problems, they should say they have their logistic problem, not now put beavers in this. And secondly, I asked a question earlier on. The same INEC that gave two different certified true copies to two different political parties in Oshun states, how are we to trust that they will not give one certified true copy to Labour, one certified true copy to APC, one certified true copy to BDB that is different? Because the same INEC that claims that, oh, we have backed it up in our server and we give certified true copy. But in Oshun states, gave different certified true copies, which is contemptuous already. Ah. I'd like you to comment on this, Al. Um, these questions are always more than one rolled into, into one. It's so difficult to separate them. Um, issue of trust. <laughs> issue of trust. Um, let us, I, uh, as to whether this can be configured remotely, I honestly don't know. As I said, I don't know how that background is, but I believe each one also has to be configured independently as well. Because the data in one is not the same data in the other. There are 176,606, I believe, that were used in the last election. You have to, I am, from my sources, these things were brought, because of the court order, they were brought to Abuja. This, some of these things probably would have done in the respective states, but they had to be centrally brought to Abuja. That is, not a logistic, that's, that presents a logistic challenge in itself. And each one, there are software issues that can be common to all, but the data in each BVAS is specific to the polling unit. So you have to touch each one individually. I may be mistaken, but maybe you get an expert in ICT to, 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 to deal with that. But as to the question of trust and CTCs, look, I can only tell you what is in the public domain. The commission in the Oshun petition did explain this, uh, Rafai. It said, I don't know, it said, and look, the CTC given to APC was yes from the back end, from the server. They, they, re they requested and were given a certified true copy of the, uh, the back end CTC. Now, all the data apparently had not been synchronized between the primary device, which is the BVAS, and the server. The BVAS transfers or transmit the data to the server. But as at the time, APC applied first. As at the time it applied, apparently, all had not been, uh, they had not synchronized. The, the mistake there, and it's a serious one, is that they did not put any caveats in the certified true copy they gave to the APC. So by the time the PDP came, they were given a certified copy, but this was after, after the um, uh, synchronization. Synchronization there is a technical word. 
to ensure that all the data in the device, primary device, have entered and hit the server. Sometimes you use things, you, you transfer or transmit data from maybe to your phone, which is a small to a back end to another phone. When you transmit that data, sometimes not all of it goes, or sometimes it takes time for it to transmit, to be transmitted into the back end that you're trying to do. That is the explanation offered by the commission. But, but and that's my understanding, that was what was um, uh, stated in the court documents which I've read. Um, how correct, how do you trust these people based on that one? It's whether you believe that that is what happened or it's not what happened. I cannot, I cannot say, neither can you. I don't, I, I don't know, but that's the explanation offered. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Mr. Oluwole Osaze Uzi, former director of voter education and publicity at INEC.